Welcome to the Royal Air Force's Battle of Brit Memorial flight here at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire, also known as Bomber County. The BBMF has been formed to commemorate the past, to celebrate the present, and importantly for me, to inspire future generations. The aircraft here are a mixture of training aircraft like the one behind me, but also there are 10 iconic aircraft from the Second World War the Lancaster, Dakota, Spitfire and Hurricane. So the BBMF as an organisation has been around since 1957, so a long time. And it's been here at RAF Coningsby since the 1970s. The flight has grown, starting as the historic aircraft flight and now being the Battle of Brick Memorial flight, with initially only four aircraft and now having 12 aircraft in this amazing hangar. If the hangar was full and no aircraft were in maintenance, We'd have a Lancaster, one of t only two flying in the world, which is a heavy bomber. A Dakota transport aircraft. Two of these wonderful chipmunks used for training the fighter pilots who then go on to fly Hurricanes, of which we can have two of up in the air at once. And also the Spitfire, a legendary fighter from the Second World War. And in the hangar, if they're all here, we have six. The chipmunk is a training aircraft for the Battle of Britain Memorial flight. Built after the Second World War in the 1950s, it is an excellent tool to teach new, modern, fast jet pilots how to fly some of the old aircraft, which are a little bit quirky. Whilst the Typhoon jet based here flies above the speed of sound, and the chipmunk only really goes the speed of your car, there are some things that make it really quite difficult to fly. There's nothing between me and the control surfaces. There's no computers. It's just wires, pulleys, and maybe bicycle chain on some of our aircraft. So it means that I have an incredible feel of the aircraft and what it's doing. There's nothing stopping me from feeling all of the motions, all of the, the wind going over the control surfaces. And I do have to balance them. So maybe if I'm turning, I have to use my feet, the rudder, just to keep it pointing in the right direction, where in a modern jet, that's all done for you by the computer. Whilst I'm flying very slowly, I've got nothing to help me go the direction I want to go. I've got no moving map, I've got no GPS that I can rely on. The only thing I rely on is a paper map with a compass and a stopwatch. And I know how fast I'm going, I know which direction I'm going, and I know for how long, and therefore I know how far I've gone along that part of the map. And I'm looking out, I'm using the symbols on the map to identify features on the ground. So a square box with a cross on top would be a church with a tower. So I'll identify that feature and know where I am. And using that, I will find my way around the country and I will find myself to an event. So it may be a school event, it could be a school fete, or it could be a large event like the Queen's birthday flypass over London. And I will get to there within 10 seconds by using just simply a map, stopwatch and a compass. So instead of the steering wheel at the front, it's got a car steering tail wheel at the back. Car steering, what's that mean? It means it doesn't steer. It spins around like a, a shopping trolley when you go shopping at the local supermarket. And that means it's quite difficult to control on the ground. The other issue with a small wheel at the back is that the nose sticks up. So again, when I'm on the ground, it's very hard to see where you're going. And in fact, you have to get used to landing, not seeing where you are actually going. And you spend a lot of time looking out the side of the cockpit as the ground comes past you. So when you see the chipmunk, or any other aircraft taxiing around on the floor, going to take off or coming back from a landing, you'll notice they weave. That's not because they're having trouble steering. It's so they can see over the nose, to the side, to the left and right, to see where they're going. Also, when they're on the ground, they have a tendency when you land to want to spin around. In essence, with a small bit at the back and the big bit at the front, it's like throwing a dart backwards. You can practice with this with Lego or Meccano at home. If you can make a triangular shape with wheels and at the point of the triangle have a wheel that turns and try to throw it backwards and forwards. If you push it with the steering wheel at the front, then it tends to go in a straight line. If you turn it round and push it, it'll want to spin round, especially if there's a bit of weight over those two main wheels. That's a really good thing to try and, uh, and you'd be surprised how, how that works. So I have to use the rudders. They're controlled with my feet and it controls the vertical surface at the back of the aircraft. 
And it's a rudder just like a ship's rudder. And it helps me go in a straight line when I'm on the ground. The other fun we can have in this aircraft, and when I was an air cadet, I used to love it, is doing aerobatics. It's like having your own personal roller coaster. The aircraft, whilst it's nice and stable to fly and learn how to fly, is also quite sprightly. And I can do loops and rolls and really enjoy myself doing that. And flying a loop is relatively straightforward. You just go fast enough and I pull the stick back and the aircraft goes up and all the way over. Great fun. The other important thing about the Chipmunk for me personally was it was the first aircraft I flew in. So when I was in the Air Training Corps, the aircraft that they used for Air Experience flights was the Chipmunk. So when I was 13, some back, sometime back in the 1980s, uh, I was first strapped into one of these aircraft and I was delighted with the a chance to get off the ground. And I still am delighted every time I get to fly, even 33 years later. Currently, if you're in the Air Training Corps or want to join the Air Training Corps uh, when you're over 13, then they use a more modern aircraft to fly, but you have the opportunity to make friends, learn about flying, go flying, and do some other incredible activities. So I hope you've enjoyed this first short introduction about the Battle of Brit Memorial flight here at RF Coningsby. I look forward to moving on from the training aircraft, the Chipmunk, and over the coming weeks, taking you around the other aircraft we've got here, uh, which have got incredible history. And for me, when I hear the noise of their engines, really turn my head and make me smile. They're incredible. I hope you also get the opportunity in the coming summer, as restrictions are removed from our COVID-19 pandemic, that you get to see us as well and see us flying over some of the events that you'll hopefully go to and enjoy with your friends and family over the summer.